Cheers, guys. Epix911, welcome to the Elitist Geek VR News for Thursday, November 17th, 2016. As with yesterday, there is literally a metric crap ton of virtual reality news. We'll get into that in a couple of minutes. Let's start with some preamble. I want to talk about a couple of games that I've been playing the last two, three days. The first of which is going to be absolutely no surprise to anyone who's watched more than a few videos, Elite Dangerous. And I think I've boiled down the essence of what it is about that game that I like so much. And it boils down to me really not being that good at it. <laughs> I honestly think that's it. Trade... All my ranks, nowhere near max, nowhere near max money, ship types, ship upgrades, missions, engineering, feature updates, you name it. I haven't maxed any one thing out, not even close. So there's lots for me in that game to enjoy. I, every time I put the rift on my head, jump into Elite Dangerous, I have fun. I've even fallen asleep a couple of times playing late at night and... Um, Usually you wake up to the sound of your ship getting destroyed or being fined mercilessly uh, because you're creaming around inside a space station. But fantastic game still. Next is Counterfight. Now, Counterfight is a game that my buddy Exidy brought to my attention. And it's, yeah, it's actually a lot more fun than I thought it would be. And it's always the case. you got to try stuff yourself. Don't take anybody's word for it. Hell, don't take my word for it. Try it yourself if you like it. And yeah, I like it. Do I love it? Is it amazing? No, but it's fun. And it definitely served its purpose. Gave me a new virtual reality experience. It's one I'm probably going to go back to. It's one that is fun as a party game, having multiple people take turns. So yeah, it's definitely going to get some more play time. Uh, and Google Earth VR, which we're going to talk about that in a few minutes. But uh, yeah, just enjoying the hell out of that as well. Now, as promised many, many months ago, and I know there's been workarounds via Revive, but officially, as of today, eValkyrie is available on the HTC Vive. So, uh, lots of people who were dying for space games and didn't know how to, you know, get Revive running are going to be happy. That is now finally available. Next up... PlayStation VR launch game Rigs has just seen a pretty massive update. I'm going to include the link below, but here's a quick summary, just, you know, roughly what you're going to get out of this new update. New mech, and it's called the APX Rig. You're also getting the new arena, which is the new Zurich Arena, and uh, a weekly trial series feature. And finally, customization tools. So very cool. Lots of stuff to throw in. Definitely impressed with that. Uh, it's a game I keep meaning to get back to. Haven't yet. Uh, but then again, nor have I bought the full version. So that's probably why. But definitely planning on it. All right. So um, this next one is a little, little mysterious. So if there's anyone who's played the Rift game Salvage, let me know in the comments below. There's only one review up on Steam. It's an Oculus Rift game, but available only via the Steam store. And the one review basically says it's very unstable and that it crashes. Now, whenever I see that, my immediate thought is, okay, that doesn't necessarily mean it's widespread. It's just this user. It could be anything. Hell, it might not even be the game that's causing the crash it could be something else on his system whatever the point being don't take my word for it don't take anybody's word for it the obvious thing try it yourself see if you like it so yeah salvaged um it's 12.99 us the devs are called opposable games and their managing director ben truhella has basically said that it's been in development for roughly four years it's in early access now so that is quite a long development time hopefully they're going to be able to finish this pull it off and get it out in the form of a full version we'll stay tuned on that but uh, yeah if anybody has played that salvaged uh, and you've tried the campaign let me know. Really curious. Okay, 
Let's jump into the news and let's talk about Google's Earth VR for a couple minutes. Now, a lot of people in the comments, uh, you know, based on my November 16th video, were, were choked, and rightfully so. But just want to point out a couple of things just to kind of consider, just to, you know, get the full balanced story on it. Obviously for me, on the surface, not a huge issue because I've got, you know, both of the platforms, right? So it's a no-brainer. I'm going to still be enjoying it regardless on my Vive. But one thing I, I you know, want to point out just as a reminder, and I touched on this in yesterday's video, is that this was not a massive official project ever. Google has a 20% program for its employees, which means they can spend 20% of their work productivity time working on pet projects, hobby projects, things that they find fun, challenging, whatever you want to call it. So that was the genesis of Google Earth VR. That's how it started. It was never going to be this massive commercial thing that they were going to throw out there. It's free. And that's probably because of its legacy. And again, probably because they didn't focus the development tools. They're very Vive 1 specific when you're trying the game. And could you make it work on a gamepad? Probably. But it would my feeling is it would probably hamper the experience somewhat. On the touch controllers, absolutely. And that's personally what I think is going to happen. I think we're going to see this. They've left the door wide open for that. They just wanted it to be a good experience. Could that be a line of BS? Of course it could. But uh, I honestly think if you consider those factors, you know, you still don't have to agree with it, but it makes a bit more sense that this was never going to be a re big retail program exclusively. Because uh, I saw that word get thrown around and I almost threw it out myself until I caught myself and edited it out. It wasn't, you know, uh, what we think of as an exclusive title. Not the intent of that, which is retail, money switches, hands, etc. So... Yeah, definitely enjoyed it. It's it's fantastic. The only thing I wish it had, guys, is when you go down to street level, at least the areas I checked, I think the big cities have the full-on street view working. But, for example, jump into my neighborhood from space, and it looks like some weird, creepy, melting candle wax row of houses. Like, it just looks bizarre. One person said it looks like N64 polygons. And I guess in a way it does. The textures aren't very advanced. But the fact that you can still go there, and when you're above the ground, even 20, 30, 40 feet, you've got the high resolution portion. It's just the street view where it resorts to, I guess, its fallback algorithm, because that would have just made this project exponentially take longer. So very cool. Hopefully for you Rift guys, you're going to see this within the next couple of months, that would be that would be awesome. And maybe you can find out a way to get it to work. Uh, that controller scheme, yeah, I don't know how to get around that, uh, even if you did get it to work. But again, I'm fairly confident you're gonna be seeing this for the touch in fairly short order. All right, next news piece, Tactical Haptics. Uh, these guys have raised 2.2 million uh, for basically a haptic VR controller development kit so software the dev kit uh, with the haptic feedback based on that now they did try a kickstarter back in 2013 at the time they asked for 175,000 us ultimately they would go on to fail in that campaign raising you know just over half of that 90,000 us dollars so they were unable to proceed They've now got funding, you know, from different sources and are going to be throwing this out there. Now, while Oculus, you know, year plus ago has said that, you know, they would open source their tracking, they haven't done that yet. And the twist to that is that HTC Vive did exactly do that and you know, release information on its tracking system. So hopefully Oculus follows suit. Uh, 
you know, something like this as a hobbyist kit has all kinds of cool potential. Probably not so mainstream because there's not going to be a huge user base out there for this device. Nonetheless, a cool story. Next up, we have a research study from Stanford. And this one's kind of bizarre. It almost looks like the Hindu god with the eight arms. Why am I cluing out on the name? But that's normal for me. Um, you Basically, what they're doing is they're concentrating on a third arm. So you use your conventional controller system, and then certain gestures will trigger the functionality slash animation of that third arm in the VR game or experience. There's a video in the link down below. Have a look. Let me know what you think of that one. It's a little odd, and I could see that getting a little confusing, but possibly some benefits there. Uh, absolutely for productivity applications, hell, maybe even games. Next news item, HTC announces, and this is just huge, I mean, 1.5 billion virtual reality investment fund and research institute in China. Now, to say China is going VR would probably be a massive understatement. They, more than any country on earth, have embraced virtual reality. It's been absolutely stunning. Of course, the question of this is all one big bubble, which I personally think there's going to be some deflation in this, enthusiasm-wise, everything else. It's going to wane a little bit, but it's always going to trend up, in my opinion. I don't think we're ever going to go, you know, back to base or, you know, regress even further than that. Absolutely not. Now, the first part of that 1.5 billion is for a new Chinese virtual reality research institute to develop breakthroughs for sensors, displays, graphics, data visualizations, human machine interaction, and all kinds of other areas. So that's kind of one. And that's going to be members of universities, research institutes that will have access and be able to do work there. They also established the Shenzhen VR Investment Fund with the help of uh, Shenzhen Municipal Industry, uh, I was going to say Industrial Industry Guiding Fund, uh, all backed by much, much money. So very cool. In a prepared statement, uh, HTC chairwoman and co-founder Chair Wang said, the research institute's multiple research and development centers and the investment fund would accelerate the development of VR industry in Shenzhen and elevate the city's research and development capabilities. So very cool. Uh, investment in virtual reality in China continues unabated, full pace. Going back to North America, MIT has a device that they're calling the MOVR and this, uh, the wing of MIT is the Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Laboratory that's working on this. Essentially what it is, is a, a wireless system that cuts the cord for place, um, PC virtual reality. That's the part of the technology that's named MOVR. And what it does is it uses millimeter wave radio signals, which are much faster than Wi-Fi channel or uh, Wi-Fi standards, but much like the 60 gigahertz are blocked rather easily by physical objects, etc. So what they've been working on is uh, adding mirrors to the base units and uh, yeah, multiple mirrors, allowing your headset to basically keep track and receive signals the entire time. So very cool. I'd love to see what comes out of that because you know, and some people don't agree that wireless is the future of VR. And I happen to be on the side that does believe eventually solutions are going to be wireless. So for, you know, those like me who believe that, I'm definitely optimistic based on what I've seen. Not just Vive's, you know, mention of their wireless development, the uh, unit that we talked about earlier this week, but stuff like this. So there's multiple things. And maybe there's one or two we're not even aware of that are quietly researching away. Uh, end point, 
we're going to get wireless, we will get there, and this is how it all starts. Stereo Labs unveils Link. Now, this is a mixed reality headset for the living room. That's what they're calling it. And uh, I'm going to read their statement here. Just It explains quite a bit. According to Stereo Labs, through high-definition stereo cameras, the headset blends the virtual and real worlds together in an immersive and photorealistic way. Link understands the world around it and perceives people and objects in space up to 20 meters away. The magic comes from Link's front-mounted sensor, a special version of Stereo Lab's Z stereo camera that replicates the way human vision works and perceives the world. Link's built-in camera scans the environment in real time and provides six degree of freedom inside out world scale positional tracking without the need for an extra sensor. So I'm going to stop right there and just say they're moving in the right direction. However, the reviewer did note when he tried the unit, there was a lot of latency to the point where it was distracting. So, hey, they're at the prototype phase. Obviously, this is something that they're actively working on that will need to be addressed, and I stress need to be addressed before this can take the next step, you know, and be closer to realizing itself as a consumer product. So, there you have it, guys. That's it for the news today. As always, cheers. I'm going to work on those gaming videos. Cheers, guys. Catch you on the VR flip side.